Trying to get your head around the German wine classification system is, is ridiculous. All of the wines have got such long names. So I'm going to break it down for you into the stuff that you need to know. A lot of the top rizzas come from Germany. It tends to be like southwest of the country. So you've got regions like Nacher, Rheinessen, Rheingau, Baden, um, Franken. There's, there's all these places. But the place to start, if you're, if you're not familiar with Riesling, is the Mosel Valley. The Mosel River runs through that bit of Germany and some of the best rizzas are from there. You would not believe how steep the slopes are. You can't even walk up them. Like Some of them have got winches to get the grapes up. It's just unbelievable. Like a cliff edge next to the river because that river can radiate heat back onto the vines and stuff. They've got to have steps going up the vineyards because they can't walk up them. The wines from one vineyard next to the other, completely different just based on the the angle to the sun and the, where it is on the slope and all that stuff. So even the type of slate and how it radiates the heat back. So Riesling can express the place in the glass and wine people like to call that terroir. So it's all about the terroir. So the German winemakers don't tend to say how sweet the wine is. They talk about it in terms of fruitiness. And some of them are really helpful because they'll actually put a little scale on the bottle that tells you how fruity the wine is. But for me and you, it's just basically how much sugar's in the wine. I'm gonna keep saying this, don't be hung up on the amount of sugar in Riesling because all the good ones have got so much acid that it balances it out. So you're not gonna feel that sweetness. Right, Predicat's wine. So you know that um, a winemaker can make like five or six different wines just from one vineyard. And it's all about ripeness. So the first wines you'll see are the Cabernets, Cabi Rizas. So Cabernets are basically the first harvest, grapes that are just about ripe enough and the wines can be a little bit off dry, but a lot of them are actually dry. It depends on producers. So most of them are around about dry. They've got a little bit of residual sugar perhaps, but not much. So they're the wines that you want to just smash, have an aperitif. So the next step up in ripeness is Spätleser, Spatty Rizzas. So the Spatties are probably harvested a week after the cabinets. A little bit riper, you're going to get more body, pretty easy to drink on, on their own and quite food friendly as well. So the next step up is Auschleser. These wines are a little bit harder to find. They're a bit rarer, they're a bit more expensive. And we're talking about selection going on. So someone's gone in the vineyard a couple of weeks after and selected only the very ripest bunches. And they might even select some of them that are even rotten and shriveled up. So you're gonna get more honeyed flavors on those. They're gonna be sweet. They're gonna be really complex as well. It's another step up in complexity. So BA Rizzas. So we're talking about select berry harvest. So just taking like a couple of grapes off a bunch, really, the ripest ones. We talked about noble rot in the Auschleser, so very shriveled grapes that have lost all their water, that are just super concentrated sugars. So we're going up a level in intensity and in, in sweetness and even up a level in price as well. Lots of honey and really nice luscious sweet aromas. Top level Rizzas, TBAs. Trockenbeeren Auschleser, that's a bit of a mouthful, isn't it? Trockenbeeren Auschleser. <laughs> So the TBA rizzas, they don't even make them in it every year because you've got to have very specific conditions. The grapes have got to be proper shriveled, like really like, they actually look like they should be thrown in the bin, some of these bunches, but really they're just concentrated and they've got lots of dense sugary syrup inside the grapes. These are some of the, the hardest to find and most expensive Rieslings. So much tropical stuff and layers of flavors and all the honeyed stuff. Quite amazing, really, TBA rizzas. And I'm gonna say this again, the acidity on these wines will actually balance all of that sugar. So even though they're incredibly sweet wines, there's good acid there, so they drink well, they drink easy. You can have it without thinking, oh shit, I could only have a little tiny glass of this. These are the sorts of wines that you could drink after a big wine tasting and it'll just reinvigorate you. It'll energize your palate. So there's one classification that I haven't mentioned yet and that's ice wine. So you need the temperature to be minus seven or minus eight in the vineyard. So the grapes actually freeze. The winemaker presses the grapes and all that comes out is basically like sugar syrup, like a really concentrated sugary liquid. I've tasted some ice wines from Canada that were quite ridiculous. They were unbelievable, like so much intense flavor. You just cannot believe it. It's the sort of thing that you just have a little sip of and it's like huge, huge concentration of flavors. And that leads me on to the million dollar question. How do you know if it's sweet or dry? Well, a lot of these wine growers in Germany, in their best vineyards, they make what is called a GG wine. They call it Grosses Gewasch. The GG wines are always dry. So if you want a dry Riesling from a top vineyard, look for the GG wines. That's a really reliable way of getting a top dry Rizza. And um, the other thing you can do is you can look on the label and you might see the word Trocken. 
So if you see Trocken on the label, it's probably going to be um, dry. Don't confuse it with Trocken Bayern Auschleser because that's very dried and shriveled grapes. Just Trocken on its own. So if you're looking to get into the top wines of Germany, I would follow the Pradikatz wine scale. Maybe get yourself some Cabernets and some Spatties and then move on to some Auschleser when you're feeling brave. Then maybe get some friends round, have some BAs or some TBAs, share it out, have some desserts. Or you could finish off the night with an ice wine because that would really energize all your guests. But don't forget, the acidity is really important on these wines because it's such a cool climate. A lot of the wines have got this zinging acid that's just like pew. So don't get hung up on how much sugar's in the wine. It's all about energy and it's complexity and it like cuts through like a fucking swearing. It's one of them wines that you give to people and they smell it and they think, oh, I'm not gonna like that, it's too sweet. And then they put it in their mouth and they love it.